HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Crooked Stars Promise by Aaron Hunter Performed by McLeod Andrews Prologue Wind rattled the branches of the willow trees and tore the reeds from their beds. Hailstar! Thick storm clouds swirled across the night dark sky. Rain battered the tightly woven dens where the River Clan warriors had been sleeping. Hailstar! The River Clan leader flattened his ears as he heard his mate's terrified cry. He dug his claws into the mud, steadying himself against the water that swirled around his legs. The river had broken its banks and was streaming into camp. He twisted his head around, searching the shadows. Hailstar! Echo Mist shrieked again. Her cry was muffled by the kit who swung from her jaws. Another clung to her back. She was staring at a nest of twigs that was spinning away from her on the flood water. A small kit was struggling to cling to it as the woven twigs collapsed like loose leaves. Hailstar dived for the nest and grabbed the kit just before he disappeared beneath the water. He thrust his son at Timberfur, who was chasing another nest. Take full kit to the elder's den! The brown tom took the dripping scrap of fur and bounded toward the high end of the camp, where the elder's den was still untouched by the rising water. Follow him, Hailstar ordered Echo Mist. She nodded, her eyes huge with fear, her long gray fur flattened to her body by the rain. Hailstar scanned the camp. Gleaming pelts darted in the darkness like panicked fish. A lithe ginger and white she-cat was clinging on to the remains of the warrior's den, trying to claw together its fast fraying walls. A stout tabby tom tried to block the foaming channel where nests swirled out into the river. The sky lit up with a white flare as lightning blazed. Thunder crashed and the wind hardened. A new wave of water surged through the camp. Shellhort! Hailstar called to his deputy. What's your opinion? A dappled gray tom, peering upriver from a beach stump among the reeds, called back. The water's rising fast, Hailstar! The elder's den isn't going to be safe for much longer. Hailstar lashed his tail. We'll have to abandon camp. No! The ginger and white she-cat let go of her den and faced the River Clan leader. We must, Bright Sky, Hailstar urged. We can't leave everything our ancestors built for us. We can rebuild it, Hailstar snapped. It won't be the same. Bright Sky plunged through the floods and clamped her paws around a floating nest. Shellheart bounded down from the stump and splashed toward his clanmate. Together we can rebuild anything, he insisted, except cats who have drowned trying to save bits of twig. Bright Sky reluctantly let go of the nest and watched it spin away into the reeds, then raced for the high end of camp. Black, bubbling water surged around the edge of the elder's den, making the woven willow stems sway with the flood. Hailstar bounded up the slope and shook the den with his paws. Get out! Echo Mist slid through the entrance. Three kits, like half-drowned mice, followed her. She stared at her mate. Where should we go? Head for high ground! Hailstar flicked his tail uphill, where the riverbank climbed toward a swath of trees and bushes. A tangle-furred elder slid out of the den. I've never seen a storm like this! A tabby and white she-cat followed. Where are we going? She rasped. The tom stroked her spine with his tail. Further inland, Birdsong, where it's safe. Birdsong's eyes widened. Away from the river. Just for now, Hailstar promised. Come on, everyone. Wait! Shellheart stopped halfway up the slope and stared over his shoulder. Where's Rainflower? Here! A pale gray queen picked her way carefully through the swirling water toward him. Her belly was swollen with unborn kits. Are you all right? Shellflower asked, sniffing her. I will be when I get my paws dry. She was out of breath, and rain ran off her fur and steady rivulets. A small white she-cat wove around the queen, her eyes flashing. She's been having pains. Shellheart narrowed his eyes. Are the kits coming, Brambleberry? I don't know yet, the medicine cat meowed. Rainflower gazed at the River Clan deputy. Go and help Hailstar, I'll be fine. Shellheart blinked at her, then turned away. Ripplaclaw! Here! A black and silver tabby tom was holding open a gap in the reeds beside the elder's den while his clanmates streamed through, heading for higher ground. Make sure every cat heads straight into the trees. 
Rippleclaw nodded to the deputy and nudged a graying elder who was refusing to go through the gap. I can't go without dusk water, the elder dug his claws into the wet earth. She went to make dirt before the camp flooded. She hasn't come back yet. We'll find her, Rippleclaw called over the wind. He glanced at his leader, who was rooted on the slope, eyes wide as he stared at his devastated camp. Can you see her, Hailstar? Hailstar shook his head. I'll make sure the dens are empty. He plunged back toward the nursery, stuck his head through the entrance, and sniffed for warm bodies. It was deserted. He checked the place where the apprentice's den had been next, and then what was left of the warrior's dens. It smelled only of sodden reeds. He glanced around the camp, fighting to keep his balance as water tugged and pushed him. Then, half running, half swimming, he crossed the clearing and followed his clan. Are we all here? he asked as he caught up with his clanmates on drier ground. Rippleclaw scowled. There's still no sign of dusk water. Bright Sky stepped forward. I'll go back and find her. Hailstar nodded. The rest of you keep moving up to the trees, he ordered. As Bright Sky dived down the bank, Rainflower let out a low moan. Shellheart stiffened. Rainflower? The queen was crouching, her face twisted in pain. Brambleberry ducked down beside her, then lifted her head. The kids are coming, she announced. Right now? Shellheart demanded. They won't wait for the storm to end, Brambleberry retorted. We must get her somewhere safe. Into the middle of the trees, Shellheart suggested. The water never reaches that far. That'll take too long. Brambleberry glanced up at the wide, low branch of an ancient oak that hung overhead. Do you think you can get her up there? Shellheart blinked. I will if I have to. He grabbed Rainflower's scruff and, half guiding, half dragging, propelled her toward the thick trunk. Up you go. Rainflower glanced upward and groaned. She opened her mouth as if she was about to protest. Then her flanks convulsed and she shrank into the spasm, looking small and wretched with her fur slicked down. Come on, Brambleberry meowed briskly. We don't have long. Rainflower dug her claws into the bark and Shellheart shoved from behind. Panting, the queen hauled herself up until she reached a hollow in the trunk where the low branch jutted out. Brambleberry skittered up the trunk, lithe as a squirrel, slipping past Shellheart. She glanced at the hollow where branch met trunk and nodded. Here will do. Then she blinked at Shellheart. Can you get herbs from my den? Shellheart nodded. I'll try. Be careful, Rainflower gasped, but Shellheart had already leaped from the branch onto the slippery ground below and was racing back toward the flooded camp. Brambleberry cleared wet leaves out of the low dip between branch and trunk. Good, there's plenty of room for you to lie down here. She nosed Rainflower into the hollow and crouched beside her on the dripping bark. Will he be all right? Rainflower whispered. She stared into the darkness where Shellheart had disappeared. He can take care of himself, Brambleberry told her. Her fur was spiked, wet to the skin. She'd been River Clan's medicine cat for fewer than three moons since her mentor, Milk Fur, had joined Star Clan. This was the first time she'd dealt with an emergency on her own. Rainflower shuddered as a fresh wave of pain passed through her belly. Brambleberry took a deep breath, blocking out the howling of the wind and the growl of thunder. She laid her forepaws gently on Rainflower's flank as another contraction gripped the queen. Brambleberry scanned the reed bed far below. No sign of Shellheart. Here. She nipped off a twig with her teeth and laid it beside Rainflower's cheek. Bite down on that when the pains come. Is that all you have? Rainflower hissed. It's all you need, Brambleberry told her. Queens have been kidding since the ancient clans. It's the most natural thing in the world. Rainflower groaned and bit down on the stick, her body shuddering. Claws ripped bark as Shellheart scrambled onto the branch. Sorry, he panted. His fur was drenched. I had to swim to your den. I managed to get inside, but your herbs have all been washed away. Brambleberry closed her eyes as she thought of how many moons it had taken to build up that supply. Before she could reply, Rainflower hissed and the stick crunched between her teeth. The first kit was coming. Brambleberry leaned down in time to see a kit slither out onto the rough bark. She gave it a lick and then passed the tiny wriggling bundle to its father. Don't let it fall, she warned. Is everything okay? Bright Sky was calling from the bottom of the tree. Water lapped her paws. The flood had reached the tree. One kit and one more to come, Brambleberry reported. 
Shellheart looked down, keeping one forepaw over the squirming kit. Did you find Duskwater? No sign of her, Bright Sky replied heavily. Shellheart lashed his tail. Join the others. We're fine. Come back for us when the waters have gone down. The stick Rainflower had been biting on crumbled into splinters as the second kit slid out. Brambleberry caught it in her teeth and placed it at Rainflower's belly. Rainflower reached for it at once, licking it roughly till it mewled. It's a tom. So's this one. Shellheart gently placed the tiny kit beside its littermate. His voice cracked. They're perfect, he whispered. Rainflower purred as Shellheart rubbed his cheek against hers. I named this one Oak Kit for the oak that protected us from the flood, she rumbled. And this one, Storm Kit, for the storm that drove us here. Kits born into a storm like this one are destined to be great warriors, Shellheart murmured. He gazed at his queen with pride. It's just a shame they can't both be leaders of River Clan. Chapter One Stormkit edged farther along the slippery branch. Volkit's dare rang in his ears. Bet you fall off before you get to the end. He unsheathed his claws and dug them into the frozen bark. From here, he could see a long way downstream, as far as the bend in the river. He could just glimpse the first of the stepping stones beyond, and on the far shore, summing rocks. Its sheer side shadowed the water, and its wide, smooth stone summit sparkled with frost. Storm Kit fluffed out his fur. He'd seen farther than any other kit in the clan. They'd never even seen past the reed bed. Be careful, Oak Kit called from the camp clearing. Shut up, Oak Kit, I'm a warrior. Storm Kit looked down past the fat, mouse-brown bulrush heads into the dense forest of reeds that jutted out of the icy river. Minnows flitted between the stems, their scales flashing. Could he reach down with a paw, break the thin ice, and scoop them out? He pressed his pale brown belly to the bark, wrapped his hind legs around the narrow branch, and swung his forepaws down toward the tiny fish. Tingling with frustration, he felt his claws brush the tips of the bulrushes. I was born in a storm. I'm going to be clan leader one day. Storm Kit stretched harder, trembling with the effort. What are you doing? Oak Kit yelped. Let him be. Storm Kit heard Rainflower silencing Oak Kit, a purr rumbling in her throat. Your brother has the courage of a warrior already. Storm Kit clung tighter to the branch. I'll be fine. I'm stronger than Star Clan. Look out! Oak Kit squeaked. A rush of wind tugged Storm Kit's fur. A flurry of black and white feathers battered his ears. Magpie! Talon scraped his spine. Frog turned in fish guts! Stormkit's claws were wrenched out of the bark. He plummeted into the reeds and crashed through the thin ice. The freezing water shocked the breath from him. Minnows darted away as he thrashed in the water. Where's the shore? River water flooded his mouth. It tasted of stone and weeds. Spluttering, he struggled to swim, but the stiff reeds blocked his flailing paws. Starkland, help me! Panic shot through him as he fought to keep his muzzle above water. Suddenly the stems beside him swished apart, and Tanglewhisker plunged through. I'm okay! Stormkit spluttered. Water rushed into his mouth again, and he sank, coughing beneath the ice. Teeth gripped his scruff. Kits! Stormkit heard Tanglewhisker's muffled growl as the elder hauled him up. Shivering with cold, Stormkit bunched his paws against his belly, wincing with embarrassment as Tanglewhisker pushed his way through the reeds and deposited Stormkit on the bank next to his mother. Nice dive, Stormkit, Volkit teased. Like a kingfisher, Beetlekit added. Maybe Hailstar should change her name to Birdbrain. Stormkit growled at the two kits as they crowded around him. One moon older, they loomed over him like crows, Echo Mist paced anxiously behind them, her soft gray fur fluffed with worry. Don't tease you two, Petal Kit pushed past her brothers. I wasn't teasing, the pretty tortoiseshell she-cat stuck her nose in the air. I think he was brave to try. Purring, Rainflower licked Storm Kit's ears. Next time, grip the branch harder. 
Storm Kid shook her off. Don't worry, I will. As Tangle Whisker shook water from his long tabby pelt, Birdsong hurried down the slope from the elder's den. You'll catch cold, she scolded. Tangle Whisker blinked at his tabby and white mate. Did you want me to let him drown? One of the warriors would have rescued him, Birdsong retorted. Tangle Whisker shrugged. They're busy. Rainflower purred. I think Storm Kit would have found his own way out. He's a strong little cat, aren't you? Storm Kit felt his fur glow with the warmth of his mother's praise. He blinked water out of his eyes and looked around the clearing. This was the home of River Clan, the greatest clan of all. He hadn't seen it before the flood, so the smooth brown mud that covered the ground and the heaps of battered wet reeds that cluttered every corner were more familiar to him than the densely woven walls and open spaces that were emerging. Timberfir and cedar pelt were carrying bundles of freshly picked dry reeds across the clearing to Softpaw and Whitepaw, who were weaving them into the tattered apprentice's den. Farther along the river's edge, Shellheart and Otter Splash were gathering more stems. Fallowtail was helping Brambleberry clear the last of the muddy debris from the medicine den. Owlfur and Lakeshine were dragging deadwood and bark that had been washed through the reeds and into the clearing. A whole moon had passed since the stormy night when Storm Kit and Oak Kit had been born, but the camp still showed signs of being swept away. Fortunately, the elder's den had held firm and only needed a little reweaving here and there, and the nursery, a ball of tightly overlapping willow branches and reeds, had been found downstream, wedged between the stepping stones. It had been easy enough to drag it back to camp and lodge it among the thick sedge bushes. A few patches had repaired it, though it was still damp inside from the soaking. Rainflower tucked fresh moss into their nest every evening, but Storm Kit still woke each morning with a cold, wet pelt. The rest of the camp was harder to fix. It had taken half a moon's digging and levering to roll the fallen tree to the edge of the clearing where the old warrior's dens had stood. Once the broken branches and shattered bark had been cleared away, New dens could be woven against its thick trunk. Until then, River Clan's warriors slept in whatever shelter they could find, making nests in the thick sedge walls around the camp or in the nooks and crevices of the fallen tree. No cat could remember what it was like to be warm. New leaf might be showing in early buds and bird song, but leaf bear frosts still gripped the banks of the river every night. Hailstar had been sleeping in the open despite the cold. He insisted that his den be the last one rebuilt. When my clan is safe and warm, then I will sleep soundly, but not before, he had vowed. Oak Kit wound around Storm Kit, soaking water from his brother's pale tabby pelt into his own bracken-colored fur. I told you to be careful. I wouldn't have fallen if that magpie hadn't dived at me. Storm Kit growled through chattering teeth. The cold water seemed to have reached his bones. You wouldn't have fallen off if you'd stayed in the clearing, a deep mew sounded from behind them. Storm Kit spun around. Hailstar was staring down at him, his thick gray pelt ruffled against the cold. Amusement lit the river clan leader's yellow eyes. Shellheart, he called to his deputy, not taking his eyes from Storm Kit. Shellheart slid out from the rushes, his wet pelt slicked against his strong frame. He glanced at Storm Kit. Is everything okay? Your kit will be a brave warrior, Hailstar meowed. If he doesn't drown himself before he starts his training. Shellheart's tail flicked as Hailstar went on. We'd better send a patrol to catch that magpie. It's beginning to think it owns River Clan territory. Shellheart dipped his head. Should we drive it off or catch it? Hailstar wrinkled his nose. We'd better catch it he growled unenthusiastically. Few cats in RiverClan liked adding birds to the fresh kill pile. We must eat whatever we can find. The flood had killed so many fish, battered them on the rocks or left them stranded on land, that river prey was scarce. I'll organize a patrol, Shellheart meowed. Wait till Rippleclaw's patrol returns, Hailstar ordered. With so much rebuilding still to do in camp, Hailstar rarely sent out more than one patrol at a time. I hope they've caught something edible this time, Tanglewhisker muttered. I'm sure they will have, Birdsong meowed. 
It's been a moon since the flood. The fish must be coming back by now. Echo Mist turned away from her kits. If only we'd buried some of the fish washed up by the flood and preserved them like ThunderClan does with their prey and leaf bear. Hailstar shook his head. Fish don't keep like forest prey. Our warriors will need the strength of Star Clan to repair the damage done by the flood, as well as keep the fresh kill pile well stocked. Stormkit stuck out his tail. Let us help with the rebuilding then. Volkit hurried forward, his gray fur spiking with excitement. Oh yes, please. We'll be really useful. Petal Kit fluffed out her tortoise shell pelt. Echo Mist swept her tail around her kits, pulling them away. Don't be frog-brained. You'll get under everyone's paws. Storm Kid plucked at the ground. No, he won't. Hailstar's whiskers twitched. I'm not going to turn down a genuine offer for help, Echo Mist. As long as they stay in the camp, I don't see a problem. We'll have a kit patrol. Storm Kit puffed out his chest as he stood shoulder to shoulder with Oak Kit, Beetle Kit, Vole Kit, and Petal Kit. Great! What should we do? Hailstar thought for a moment. If you take the reeds that Otter Splash is gathering to Soft Paw and White Paw, then Timber Fur and Cedar Pelt will be free to join Shellheart's hunting patrol. Come on! Storm Kit raced for the shore where Otter Splash was tossing reeds. Careful! Cedar Pelt was pawing together a freshly harvested pile as Storm Kit skidded to a halt next to him. Don't knock them into the river. I won't. Storm Kit sank his teeth into a stem and began dragging it across the clearing to the apprentice's half-built den. Well, well. White Paw paused from weaving stems on the roof of the apprentice's den and looked down. We have new volunteers. Is that a whole reed? Soft Paw appeared from inside the framework of woven willow stems, her tabby patched tail quivering. We'll be finished before we know it with help like this. I can carry more, Storm Kit boasted, puffed up with pride. He dropped the stem and turned away, nearly crashing into Beetle Kit. Watch out, mewed the black kit, tripping over the reed he was dragging. Sorry. Storm Kit dashed back toward the reed bed, past Vol Kit, who had three reeds clamped between his jaws. I'm bringing four next time, he called over his shoulder. He pricked his ears as he heard paws splash on the marshy earth beyond the entrance tunnel. A cat was racing toward the camp. Storm Kit halted, blinking as the sedge wall of the camp rustled and Ripple Claw pounded into the clearing. Any prey? Birdsong called. Ripple Claw shook his head, his silver flanks heaving. Sunning rocks, he gasped. Thunder Clan has taken sunning rocks. Chapter Two. Thunder Clan. Stormkit raced for the fallen tree, scrambled onto the trunk, and scooted back along the icy branch that stretched over the river. Those snake hearts! He could see the scrawny pelts of Thunder Clan warriors swarming like rats over the huge gray rocks that had always been River Clans, despite Thunder Clan's grasping claims. How dare they! Stormkit heard his father's growl and turned to see Shellheart leap up the trunk of the ancient willow and hurry along one of the low boughs that reached out over the water. The River Clan deputy peered through the trailing branches. I don't believe it. Pine Star stretched out in the sunshine like it's his territory. Stormkit saw a massive fox red tom sprawling on the rocks, his soft belly fur glittering where it had brushed the frosty stone. Ripple Claw paced the clearing, his black and silver fur spiked up. They must think we've lost our teeth and claws. The sedge swished as mud fur and bright sky raced into camp. Pike Tooth followed, his tabby fur bristling, a fat carp skewered between his long front teeth. He dropped the fish and stared at Hailstar. Who's going to lead the battle patrol? Storm Kit lashed his tail. Why couldn't he be an apprentice already? Then he could join his clanmates in driving the mangy ThunderClan cats off RiverClan territory. What's going on? Troutclaw padded stiffly out of the elder's den. His gray tabby pelt was ruffled from sleep. There are ThunderClan warriors on Sunning Rocks, Stormkit called from his perch. Hailstar swung his gaze around. Get down from there, Stormkit, he growled. This isn't a time for games. I'm not playing, Stormkit objected but he backed along the branch and jumped down from the trunk. Shellheart scrambled down from the willow and faced Hailstar. 
Are we going to let those squirrel chasers stay there? Rippleclaw growled. They must know we can see them. Which means they'll be ready for us if we attack, Troutclaw patted down the slope. How could we win a battle that they're more prepared for than we are? He shook his matted head. Haven't we lost enough? Stormkit wondered if the old Tom was thinking of Duskwater. He'd heard Rainflower telling Echo Mist that the she-cat's body had never been found after the flood. We'll win this time, he mewed. Hush, Stormkit. Shellheart snapped his head around. Timberfur crossed the clearing, his eyes dark. We might lose. Cedar Pelt joined Troutclaw and swept his tail sympathetically across the old cat's shoulder. Sunning Rocks has always been hard to defend. Stormkit stiffened. That's no reason to let ThunderClan have it. He stepped back as Shellheart brushed in front of him, muffling his mew. You're too young for this debate, the RiverClan deputy warned. Rainflower scooped Stormkit aside with her tail. Hush, little one. You have a warrior's heart as brave as any cat's. You'll get your turn. You bet I will. Stormkit shut his mouth and curled his claws. One day I'll be leader, and then I'll decide when we go into battle. Ow! He felt a tail beneath his paws and turned to find Oak Kit glaring at him. That's my tail you're digging your claws into. Sorry. Storm Kit guiltily hopped off his brother's tail. We have to punish those squirrel chasers for stealing our territory, right? Oak Kit didn't answer. He was watching Brambleberry. The white medicine cat had slid out from her den among the sedges. Do you think we should fight, Brambleberry? Hailstar asked. Brambleberry shook her head. Not now. I have no way to treat battle wounds. The flood took my herbs, and my store will stay empty till New Leaf brings fresh crops. I can only use the most basic remedies. And we're half starved, Troutclaw added. Stormkit blinked. He hadn't been hungry. Rainflower always had enough milk for him and Oak Kit. He studied his clanmates and noticed for the first time how thin they were looking, nearly as scrawny as ThunderClan cats. Hailstar sighed. I don't want to start a battle we are likely to lose, and I don't want warriors with injuries that can't be healed. Rippleclaw lashed his tail. Then we're just going to let them take as much territory as they want? They only want sunning rocks, Echo Mist pointed out. They'd never try to cross the river. Piketooth growled. There's prey at sunning rocks, forest prey that can make up for the lack of fish. He kicked the carp lying at his paws. It took all morning to catch this. Echo Mist dipped her head. But it's almost New Leaf. It won't be long before we have more prey than we need. And right now I'd rather go hungry than lose another clanmate. She glanced at Troutclaw. Piketooth dug his claws into the earth. Are we going to give up sunning rocks without a murmur? No. Hailstar crossed the clearing and leaped onto the low branch of the willow. He glanced towards sunning rocks. Ripple Claw. Show heart, his tail swept the bark. Take Otter Splash and Bright Sky to Sunning Rocks. Don't fight. Tell Pine Star and his clanmates that they may have Sunning Rocks today, but warn them, those rocks are river clans, and we will defend them soon. Don't worry, those snake hearts will get the message. Shellheart's claws sprayed soft earth as he charged for the entrance tunnel, with Rippleclaw, Bright Sky, and Otter Splash pounding after. Quick! As his clanmates bunched into anxious, murmuring groups, Stormkit hissed in his brother's ear and dashed back to the fallen tree. He scampered along the trunk, checking over his shoulder. Oakkit was following. Where are we going? To watch. Watch what? We're going to watch Shellheart tell Pinestar off. Stormkit scampered along the branch. Dig your claws in, he warned his brother. It's slippery. When the branch grew thin enough to dip under his weight, Stormkit halted and ducked down to let Oakkit watch over his shoulder. Only four ThunderClan warriors remained on Sunning Rocks. Pinestar was still lying on the smooth, flat rock, showing his belly to the leaf bear's sun. A bright ginger tom sat beside him, eyes closed, tail wrapped over his paws. That must be Sunfall, the deputy, Oak Kit whispered. Volkit said he was ginger. Two lithe warriors paced back and forth beside the leader and deputy, a blue-gray tom and a mottled tabby. 
Their eyes were wide and their ears pricked. Suddenly, the tabby halted and stared at the river. Stormkit followed his gaze. Shellheart was swimming toward Sunning Rocks. Water splashed as Rippleclaw, Bright Sky, and Otter Splash plunged in after him. On Sunning Rocks, the Grey Tom's pelt had bristled along his spine. He darted to the edge of the rocks and showed his teeth, his gaze fixed on the River Clan patrol. Pine Star jumped to his paws, quickly followed by Sunfall. The four ThunderClan warriors lined up on the crest of the rock as Shellheart launched himself, dripping from the water. In two bounds, the River Clan deputy scaled the smooth cliff face. Sunfall arched his back and hissed as Shellheart approached. Pine Star narrowed his eyes. Stormkit felt Oakkit tense behind him. Will they fight? Oakkit breathed. Wait! Stormkit's paws trembled with excitement as Rippleclaw leaped up onto sunning rocks with bright sky and otter splash following. Stormkit pricked his ears, straining to hear. You're on River Clan territory, Shellheart growled. Sunfall took a step forward. Make us leave then, Shellheart flicked his tail. This is not yet a battle worth fighting, he meowed. He looked back toward the River Clan camp, clearly visible through the leafless trees. But we'll be watching. You should watch out too, because this is our land, and we will defend it. The Grey Tom's lip curled. But not today. Rippleclaw darted forward, flattening his ears. If it comes to a battle, he hissed in the Grey Tom's face, it'll be me who shreds you first. Rippleclaw, Shellheart called the warrior back and met Pine Star's narrowed gaze. You can have Sunning Rocks for now. Help yourself to any fresh kill you find here. River Clan doesn't need mice, but we'll take it back when we want it back. Storm Kid could feel his brother's heart pounding. Mangy mouse eaters, he muttered. Enjoy Sunning Rocks while you can. Shellheart jumped down to the riverbank and waited while Rippleclaw, Otter Splash, and Bright Sky dived past him into the water. He glanced back up at the rock face once more before following his clanmates. Watch out! Oak Kit's yelp made Stormkit jump. The magpie's coming back! Stormkit looked up and saw a flash of black and white feathers outlined against the gray sky. Hold on to me! He ordered. As Oak Kit sank his claws into his pelt, Stormkit reared up on his hind legs. He lashed out at the magpie with his forepaws just as it swooped level with the branch. Held firm by Oak Kit, Stormkit slashed again and again until he felt his claws slice through feather and reach flesh. Squawking, the magpie wheeled away and Stormkit dropped to four paws. Oak Kit let go and blinked at him. Nice move! Thanks for hanging on to me. Stormkit looked at the bloody feathers caught in his claws. I don't think that magpie will be back for a while. He blinked triumphantly at his brother. We're going to be the best warriors River Clan's ever seen. Chapter 3 Stormkit stretched in his nest, feeling the muscles slide underneath his glossy fur. He could almost reach from one wall to the other in this corner of the nursery. Early morning sunshine filtered through the roof, making the reed walls glow. In the three moons since ThunderClan had stolen sunning rocks, the sun had grown hotter and higher in the sky. New growth speared up through the old reed bed, and the sedge bushes smelt sweet and lush. Wake up, Storm Kit whispered in Oak Kit's ear. Rainflower stirred sleepily and wrapped her tail over Storm Kit's belly. Go back to sleep, little warrior, she purred. It's still early. Stormkit shook off her warm, soft tail and sat up. He poked Oakkit with a paw. What is it? Oakkit grumbled, his eyes tightly shut. Let's go explore. Remember to stay in camp, Rainflower murmured sleepily. Of course, Stormkit promised. He poked Oakkit again. Oakkit hid his nose under a paw. Don't you ever sleep? We've been asleep all night. The Dawn Patrol left ages ago. In Echo Mist's nest, Beetle Kid struggled to his paws. His black pelt rumpled. Is it time to eat? Vole Kit opened his eyes. Yeah, I'm hungry. Petal Kit was already sitting up and washing. 
The hunting patrol will bring something back for us. She leaned forward to lick Beetle Kit's head, smoothing the fur tufted between his ears. Echo Mist rolled over and began to snore gently. Storm Kit hopped out of his nest and stretched. We're going to catch our own prey. Oak Kit sat up. Are we? Rainflower lifted her head. I hope you're not going to get your brother in trouble again, Storm Kit. Why are you blaming me? Yesterday, they'd made it as far as the stepping stones before being spotted and escorted back to camp by a very cross mud fur. It's not my fault Oak Kit followed the patrol. He wasn't following the patrol, Rainflower reminded him. He was following you. He was? As Storm Kit blinked at her innocently, she flicked his ear with her tail tip. I suppose I'm lucky to have such a brave, handsome kit. She rested her chin on her paws. I'm brave too. Oak Kit leaped out of the nest and headed for the entrance. Wait for me. Storm Kit caught up and slid past him out of the nursery. The clearing was already warm and bright, though the sun was barely higher than the ancient willow. Hail Star and Shell Heart sat beside the fallen tree, their heads dipped in quiet conversation. Trout Claw, Bird Song, and Tangle Whisker were sunning themselves on the smooth earth outside the elder's den. Timberfur and Otter Splash were poking among the reeds at the edge of the river, their ears pricked, tails twitching, clearly hoping to find a minnow among the watery stems. Brambleberry was laying out limp leaves in the sun, her snowy paws tinged with green sap. What are those for? Storm Kit crossed the clearing and sniffed the leaves. He screwed up his face. They smelled sour. They're colt's foot leaves, Brambleberry told him. Good for coughs. Storm Kit nudged a leaf with his front paw. How? You have to chew them to get the juice out, Brambleberry smoothed another leaf out on the warm earth. Then you swallow the juice and spit out the leaf. Oak Kit skidded to a halt beside them. Where'd they come from? I picked them beside the falls, Brambleberry meowed. Can we come with you to pick more? Storm Kit asked, hopefully. Brambleberry's whiskers twitched. Perhaps in two moons' time in your paws. I'm sure Hailstar will let us go now if he knows we're with you, Storm Kit pleaded. Brambleberry glanced at the River Clan leader. Why don't you go and ask him? Storm Kit scowled. Maybe later. He'd asked Hailstar if they could leave the camp before. Once, if they could help Shellheart hunt. Twice, if they could shadow Rippleclaw's patrol. But the answer had always been the same. Wait until your apprentices. Storm Kit stared enviously at the apprentices' den, tasting the air. There was no warm scent of sleep drifting from it. Soft Paw and White Paw must have left with the dawn patrol. Lucky furballs, he muttered. Oak Kit shrugged. I thought we were going hunting. We are. Where? Oak Kit scanned the camp. In the sedges? Storm Kit fluffed out his fur. I want to catch more than butterflies. We could try hunting for minnows with otter splash and timber fur, Oak Kit suggested. Storm Kit rolled his eyes. Minnows? What's wrong with minnows? Do you want to stay in camp? We have to. Oh, come on. Storm Kit butted his brother with his head. Let's sneak out and hunt like real warriors. What if we get caught again? Oak Kit lowered his voice. Hailstar said he'd make us wait an extra moon to get our apprentice names if we got into any more trouble. He didn't mean it, Storm Kit scoffed. River Clan needs warriors. Hailstar's not a frog brain. The sooner we're out patrolling and fighting, the better it'll be for the clan. He flicked his tail. When I'm leader, I'll let Kits go out of camp whenever they want. Stormstar. What a great name. Hey! Oak Kit jabbed him with a paw. Rainflower says I was born first, so I get to be leader. You, leader? Storm Kit ruffled his brother's ears. You wanted to hunt minnows, he scoffed, then added kindly. I'll make you deputy when I'm leader. Thanks a lot. Come on, let's go and hunt. Before Oak Kit could answer, mewling filled the clearing. Vole Kit and Beetle Kit were tumbling noisily out of the nursery. Wait for me! Petal Kit scrambled after them, pawing at their tails as they scooted across the clearing and skittered to a halt by the reed bed. 
Beetle Kid thrust his nose into the stalks beside Otter Splash, making the reeds tremble. Have you seen any fish? Don't scare them off, Otter Splash grumbled, not taking his eyes from the patch of water beneath his nose. Storm Kid nudged Oak Kid. Come on, before Beetle Kid starts asking us questions. Which way? Oak Kid asked. We can't just walk through the entrance tunnel. Dirt place. Then we can squeeze through the sedges out onto the marsh. Storm Kit headed toward Dirt Place. He tucked through the fronds, Oak Kit on his tail. Through the gap lay a sandy clearing, clumped in places and stinking. Oak Kit poked his paw through a clump of sedge. Through here? Let me see. Storm Kit pushed past and nosed his way through the stems. They were sharp and grazed his nose, but he pushed on, eyes half closed until he broke out into sunshine. A wide marshy plain stretched ahead of him, grassy and lush, filled with patches of reed and sedge and white billowing flowers. It's huge! Oak Kit slid out behind Storm Kit and stared at the green wetland. It stretched far along the riverbank and sloped up toward a smooth meadow where horses grazed. Let's head for the river, Oak Kit suggested. Storm Kit tilted his head on one side. Don't you want to cross the marsh? I thought we were going to find prey, Oak Kit reminded him. What lives in the marsh? Frogs, Storm Kit guessed. If you want to spend your morning hopping after a frog, then go ahead, Storm Star. Oak Kit padded away. I'm heading for the river. Okay, Storm Kit's paws sank into watery moss, cool and springy beneath his pads. He bounced along behind Oak Kit, following the sedge wall. Wait! Oak Kit halted. Storm Kit stumbled into him. What? We're near the camp entrance, Oak Kit whispered. Storm Kit recognized the well-trod grass track that led out from the sedges and weaved between the thick bushes and grasses that swathed the riverbank. Follow me, Storm Kit slid ahead and pushed his way into the rich greenery at the side of the path. Nosing his way through the soft leaves, he kept to the bushes. Where water puddled the path, he crossed deliberately through it, hoping the mud would disguise their scent. Then, glancing over his shoulder to make sure Oak Kit was following, he plunged into the long grass on the other side of the path. The ground fell away from beneath his paws and he tumbled down the bank. He landed with a thump on a muddy flat at the river's edge. Water lapped his pelt as he scrambled to his paws. He moved just in time. With a yelp, Oak Kit tumbled after him. Jumping up, ruffled, Oak Kit shook out his fur. Nice root, he muttered. It's not my fault I don't know the whole territory yet, Storm Kit defended himself. Hailstar won't let us explore, remember? He gazed downriver, watching the water flow away in a lazy brown flood that moved with such ease it was hard to imagine the same river had once destroyed the camp. Look, the stepping stones. Storm Kit spotted smooth boulders breaking the surface farther downstream. We can get to Sunning Rocks. Oak Kit blinked. Why would we go to Sunning Rocks? It belongs to Thunder Clan. No, it doesn't, Storm Kit answered hotly. They're invaders. He glanced at the far bank. A stretch of sandy shore lay in the shade of Sunning Rocks. Storm Kit stiffened. A cat was moving along the water's edge, tugging at weeds that clung to the rocks and streams in the current. Look, he hissed to Oak Kit. It must be a Thunder Clan warrior, Oak Kit gasped. A warrior? No way, Storm Kit sniffed. Look at him. He looks older than Sunning Rocks. The Thunder Clan cat was unkempt, his thick gray coat clumped with burrs and twigs. His ears were ragged and his whiskers frazzled like chewed grass. What's he doing? Oak Kit whispered. The Tom was nosing intently through the weeds along the shore, sniffing each one, tasting the air, and then hesitating a moment before tugging out a leaf or two with his shaggy paws. Storm Kit bristled. He's stealing our herbs. They're not exactly ours. Hailstar gave Sunning Rocks to Thunder Clan. No, he didn't. He just didn't fight them. Besides... Storm Kit glanced up at the huge gray boulders that loomed over the river. That old cat is on the shore, not the rocks, and that's definitely ours. Should we go and tell Shellheart? mewed Oak Kit. Storm Kit stared at his brother. Are you frog-brained? He's on our land. 
If we tell Shellheart, he'll know we were outside camp. Oak Kip frowned. So what should we do? Let's chase him off. Chase him off? Oak Kit's eyes widened. He's bigger than both of us put together. But look at the state of him, Storm Kit pointed out. He can't even wash himself. He's obviously not a real warrior. He might not even be ThunderClan. He might be a loner. I think we should tell Shellheart. Oak Kit dug his claws into the mud. But Storm Kit was already padding along the shore. Let's deal with this ourselves. Oak Kit scurried after him. We can't take on a full-grown Tom. Why not? There are two of us. But we- Shh! Storm Kit crouched and began stalking along the riverbank. Why the mange ball will hear us. The ragged Tom was still sniffing his way from plant to plant. Storm Kit paused and pressed his belly to the mud, feeling water soak his fur. The stepping stones began about a tail length from the bank. A narrow stretch of water stood between him and the first rock. The river wasn't flowing particularly fast, but it looked deep and cold around the base of the stone. Storm Kit tensed, then leaped, clearing the channel and landing with a soft skid on the first stepping stone. It felt smooth beneath his paws, worn by countless moons of lapping water. Oak Kit joined him with a muffled oof. There was only just enough room for both of them. I still think we... Storm Kit flicked his tail over Oak Kit's mouth. Shh! The river gurgled between the stepping stones, making tiny whirlpools at the edges of the rock. Storm Kit took a breath and launched himself toward the next stone. He landed with his paws splayed out, feeling dizzy. The river streamed around the rock so smoothly it seemed for a moment as though the rock were moving. Storm Kit steadied his gaze, fixing it on the ragged Tom who was still skulking in the shade of sunning rocks, then jumped onto the next rock, and the next keeping low and praying that the swirling river would camouflage their approach. He felt Oak Kit's pelt brush his as his littermate kept pace. One more stone and they'd be on the shore. Oak Kit breathed in his ear. He's going to see us for sure. Not if we land over there. Storm Kit nodded toward a clump of mallow hanging at the river's edge. We'll hide behind that. He sprang, pushing off hard, and swished through the mallow clump. Wet sand spattered around his paws as Oak Kit landed clumsily beside him. Storm Kit froze and glanced at the Tom. Had he spotted them? The Tom was tugging at weeds, his pelt smooth, his gaze intent on his leaves. Then he looked up, his cold blue gaze bored into Storm Kit's. Did you think I wouldn't notice you? A growl edged his mew. Oak Kit's fur bushed up. Let's get out of here. Not yet, Storm Kit showed his teeth. You're on River Clan territory, he hissed at the Tom. Get off our land. Oak Kit unsheathed his claws. Go and steal someone else's herbs. The Tom's gaze narrowed. How dare you? His ears flattened. Storm Kit felt sick. He's going to kill us, Oak Kit croaked. Run! Storm Kit turned and scrambled through the mallow. He skidded to a halt on the first stone, then leaped again. Oak Kit landed beside him. Help! He wailed as his hind paws slipped off the stone. Storm Kit grabbed his brother's scruff before Oak Kit could slide into the swirling river. Thanks! Oak Kit regained his balance and jumped for the next stone. The Tom yowled behind them. Storm Kit hurtled after his brother. You don't get away from Goose Feather that easily, the old cat snarled. Storm Kit felt hot breath on his heels and jagged claws spiked his tail. Unbalanced, he leaped for the final stone. His paws hit water as he plunged into the river. Starclan, help me! Pain shot through his face as he collided with the base of the rock. Cold water engulfed him, and the world turned black. Churning his paws, Storm Kit flailed for the surface, but he had no idea which way up was. Gravel grazed his belly, then his spine as the river tumbled him downstream like a leaf. Water stung his eyes as he opened them, searching for sunlight. Shadowy shapes raced past him. He struggled against the current, trying to swim, but another submerged rock slammed against his side, knocking the last of his breath from him. His chest heaved as he fought not to suck in water. Then he saw a shape moving steadily toward him, a she-cat, orange and white. He could just make her out in the gloom. Had Star Clan come to claim him? Terror clawed Storm Kit's belly, and he fought harder, praying for air, for the surface.
for something to grab onto that would stop him being washed into Star Clan's hunting grounds. He couldn't die yet. The orange and white cat swam closer. I don't want to come with you, the words screamed in Stormkit's mind. Don't worry, little one. He heard the cat's words as though she were whispering in his ear, even though she was still a tail length away. It's not your time yet. You have a great destiny ahead of you. Her amber eyes shone in the green water, and then she was gone. Teeth gripped Stormkit's scruff. With a jerk, he was above the rushing water, dangling from the jaws of mud fur. The brown warrior turned against the current and swam for shore. Stormkit gulped air, coughing and trembling, suddenly aware of an agonizing pain in his cheek. Mudfur scrambled from the river and bounded up the bank. Is he okay? Oakkit yowled. Stormkit could hear his brother, but he couldn't open his eyes because his whole face felt as if it were on fire. He felt liquid bubbling at his lips and tasted blood. He started to shake. What's wrong with me? Mudfur didn't speak or put him down just headed along the path toward camp with Stormkit swinging limply beneath his chin. What's wrong with him? The sound of fear in Oak Kit's voice frightened Stormkit more. Each jolt as Mudfur's paws hit the ground shot through his face like lightning. Stormkit tried to open his eyes. Grass, sedge, and willow herb streamed past in a blur. He could hear his own breathing. He was terribly cold and his paws felt numb. It's not your time yet. It's not your time yet. He clung to the orange and white cat's words, repeating them as though praying to Star Clan. He smelled the warm scent of brambleberry as mud fur ducked through the sedge tunnel into camp. Where did you find him? Rainflower's shrill mew cut through the anxious murmur that greeted them. Oak Kit! Oak Kit! I'm here. What happened? Storm Kit fell and hit a stepping stone. Brambleberry's mew sounded calm among the others. Take him to my den, Mudfur. Past the haze of pelts and worried eyes, past the deep olive sedge and into the green calm of Brambleberry's den. It was a wide space, almost a clearing thickly walled by sedge with a nest hollowed out at one side where Brambleberry slept. Stormkit smelled his mother close by, her scent edged with fear. Rainflower moved around him, pushing past Brambleberry, nudging Mudfur as the brown tom laid Stormkit gently down. What has he done to himself? Let me see. Brambleberry nosed the queen away. Stormkit tried to focus on the white medicine cat, but the black spots that dotted her fur swam before his eyes. His face, his handsome face. Rainflower's wail sent a new wave of terror through him. Mudfur's pelt brushed Stormkit's flank as he huddled face down on the smooth earth floor. Come on, Rainflower, you need to check on Oakkit. He's pretty shaken up. As the warrior steered Rainflower from the den, Brambleberry leaned closer to Stormkit. Don't worry, little one. I'll take care of you. Stormkit lay numb and trembling as Brambleberry disappeared for a moment. When she returned, she was carrying something that had a strong, sour tang. I'm going to squeeze juice into the side of your mouth, she told him. It'll taste bad and it'll hurt to swallow, but you must take it. Her mew was firm. It'll help you feel better. Stormkit tried to speak, but his mouth felt thick and strange, and another jolt of pain made him cry out. This has willow bark, thyme, and poppy extract in it, Brambleberry went on, her voice low and soft. Stormkit felt wetness at the side of his mouth, and then a stream of liquid trickled in. He forced himself to swallow in spite of the agony. Brambleberry stroked his flank with her tail. Have a long sleep, and when you wake up, You'll feel a lot better than you do now. As she talked, the medicine cat pulled moss around him until he felt warm and cozy. Her words drifted into a low murmur until the green clearing and the sharp sense of herbs faded into darkness. Chapter Four Stormkit blinked at his mother. Are you leaving already? I've got to. Rainflower meowed, glancing up at the sky. Why won't she look at me? There's a lot of hunting to do now the fish are back, she went on. Oak Kit rested his paws on the edge of Storm Kit's nest. I'll stay, he promised. 
Stormkit tried to catch Rainflower's eye. I wanted to tell you about the moth I caught last night. Confined to the medicine den for a moon, he'd had little chance to hunt. It had been pure luck the moth had flitted into Brambleberry's den. He'd snatched it out of the air with a single paw. Oak Kit shuffled closer. You can tell me about the moth. It was huge. Stormkit leaned toward his mother, but Rainflower was already halfway to the entrance. I promised Rippleclaw I'd join his patrol, she called. Rainflower! Brambleberry backed out of the small hollow in the sedge wall where she stored her herbs. Strange green scents clung to her fur, and there were fragments of leaf on her muzzle where she'd been sorting through her supplies. Rainflower halted. Yes? Stormkit can go back to the nursery today, Brambleberry told her. Really? Oak Kit tumbled into Stormkit's nest and started pummeling him playfully with his hind paws. That's great! Come on, lazy bones! So he's better? Rainflower's eyes darkened. She glanced at Stormkit. You can't do any more for him? Oak Kit froze mid pummel. He's got all his ears and whiskers? Stormkit heard sharpness in the medicine cat's mew. He can play and practice hunting like any other kit. What more do you want? Rainflower turned away and ducked through the entrance. Fine. Send him back to the nursery then, she called as the tip of her tail disappeared. Stormkit tilted his head on one side. Is Rainflower okay? She's just tired from all the hunting, Oak Kit mewed. Brambleberry flexed her claws. Tired, she echoed dryly. Oak Kit flicked Stormkit's ear with his tail. Come on! He leaped out of the soft moss nest. You've been lying around too long. We need to get you fit. We'll be apprentices in less than two moons. I'm afraid not. Brambleberry crossed the den. Stormkit's heart lurched. What do you mean? Her blue gaze was clear. You'll have to wait a while to become a paw, little one. Stormkit leaped out of his nest. Why? His paws trembled beneath him. You broke your jaw, Brambleberry reminded him. But it's healed, Stormkit told her. He opened and closed his mouth to show her. It still felt stiff and lopsided, and it ached if he lay on it during the night. But he knew the bones had mended because the pain wasn't so sharp it made him feel sick. You hardly ate for a half moon, and even now you find it hard, Brambleberry's gaze flicked along Stormkit's flank. You need to fill out a bit before you start your apprentice training. It'll be okay, Oak Kit mewed. I bet you catch up with me even if you start your training late. He nudged Stormkit with his shoulder. Stormkit almost fell over. When did Oak Kit grow so much? He was strong and weighty, more like a paw than a kit. Stormkit felt tiny beside him, with hollow flanks and thin legs. He sat down. Was this going to stop him from becoming a warrior? What about clan leader? Could he still be clan leader if he was apprenticed late? Brambleberry touched his head with her muzzle. Oak Kit's right, she murmured. You'll grow in no time. Just eat well and get some exercise. Star Clan is watching over you. There's no reason why you won't be as big as Shellheart by next new leaf. Star Clan's watching over me. Stormkit dug his claws into the soft ground. I'm going to get big and strong and be the best apprentice ever. Oak Kit flicked his tail toward the tunnel. Come on, everyone wants to see you. He bounded away and Stormkit followed, suddenly excited to be out in the camp again. Thanks, Brambleberry, he called over his shoulder. I'll check on you tomorrow, Brambleberry promised. Make sure you eat well and rest whenever you get tired. Stormkit burst out into the clearing, dazzled by the sunshine and surprised by the heat. The river chattered beyond the reed bed and wind swished the rushes. New warrior dens had been woven around the fallen tree. The apprentice's den had grown a warm coating of moss, and the nursery, tucked away in the sedge wall, looked as cozy as ever. Hailstar's den had been rebuilt, its willow stems bright and freshly woven among the roots of the ancient willow. Beetle Kit, Vole Kit, and Petal Kit were chasing a ball of moss in the clearing. Mud fur was lying in the shade with cedar pelt. Shellheart was sharing fresh kill with Hailstar, Tangle Whisker, and Bird Song at the top of the slope while Softpaw hauled stale moss from their den.
Are you almost finished, Softpaw? Fallowtail, her mentor, was calling from the camp entrance. I want to teach you a new battle move. Won't be long, Softpaw answered. Stormkit breathed deep and smelled the mouth-watering tang of newly caught fish. Are you hungry? He asked Oak Kit. I ate when the Dawn Patrol got back, but there's fresh kill left if you want some. He flicked his tail toward the pile of fat trout lying beside the reed bed. Let me get you one. Oak Kit raced away. Storm Kit! Mudfur's rumbling mew sounded across the clearing. The warrior clambered to his paws and padded across the clearing. It's good to see you up and about. Volkit caught the moss ball Petal Kit had just tossed and turned to stare at them. Storm Kit! He left the ball and came charging across the clearing, Beetle Kit and Petal Kit on his tail. They dived around mud fur, nearly tripping over the brown Tom's feet, before skidding to a halt in front of Storm Kit. Volkit gasped. How are you? Petal Kit pushed past her brother. We kept begging to visit you, but Rainflower wouldn't let us. Her eyes glittered. Would she, Mudfur? She looked up anxiously at the brown warrior. Why does she sound weird? Mudfur sat down behind the kits. She was worried you were too sick. Stormkit frowned. He'd begged Rainflower for visitors. Had he really been too sick to see anyone? He'd been in pain, but after half a moon, he'd been as bored and frustrated as a turtle up a tree. Beetlekit was staring at him. You look funny. Hush, Beetlekit. Echo Mist came trotting across the clearing. He looks very well considering what he's been through. She licked Stormkit between the ears. I'm so pleased you're out of the medicine den, she purred. The nursery's been quiet without you. She glanced at Volkit. Well, almost quiet. Volkit swallowed. We've, er, uh, made a training corner in the nursery. He looked away. You'll love it. We've got bulrushes and moss to help us practice. He can see it later, Echo Mist silenced her kit. Right now he needs sunshine and food. She glanced at Storm Kit. And plenty of it. Even Echo Mist sounded strange. Storm Kit frowned. Oak Kit's getting me some fresh kill, he told her. Storm Kit! Birdsong's mew sounded from the top of the bank. Is that Storm Kit out of the medicine den? Tangle Whisker appeared beside Birdsong, whose tail curled over her back. Storm Kit looked past them to see his father, but Shellheart was already on his paws and bounding down the slope. Storm Kit! He nudged Storm Kit's cheek with his muzzle, as though he hadn't seen his kit in moons. Storm Kit wriggled away. You just saw me yesterday. It's just good to see you out of the medicine den at last. You have lots to catch up on. I've been giving Oak Kit some training to get him ready for his apprenticeship. You need to get to the same level as fast as you can. Storm Kit purred. He glanced across the clearing, wondering if Oak Kit had found him a fish yet. His belly was growling. He stiffened. Ripple Claw was staring at him from underneath the ancient willow. The silver and black warrior looked away as Storm Kit caught his gaze. The whole clan was acting odd. Confused, Storm Kit turned back to the friendly faces crowding around him. Everyone was making a fuss, saying how pleased they were to see him, how much they'd missed him. But there was something peculiar about the way they were looking at him, because they weren't actually looking at him. Storm Kit realized with a jolt that despite the purrs and kind words, none of them was looking directly at his face. A cold chill ran through him. He shouldered his way past Echo Mist and Mud Fur and headed for the reed bed. Storm Kit? Oak Kit dropped the fish he was carrying as Storm Kit dashed past him. Storm Kit stopped at the shore by a patch of clear water and stared down. Storm Kit! He hardly heard Oak Kit's mew. He was staring at the strange cat reflected in the water. That wasn't his face. This cat's jaw was twisted from just below his ear, hardly visible beneath one cheek, sunken horribly beneath the top lip. His nose was stretched sideways and up, and his tongue poked out at one side, lolling between his teeth like a fat pink worm. What happened to me? He whispered. Oak Kit pressed close to him. You're lucky to be alive, that's what, he mewed fiercely. He stroked Storm Kit's spine with his tail. 
Brambleberry thought you'd die of shock and then infection. She fought really hard to keep you alive. And Shellheart sat with you night after night. What about Rainflower? Was this why his mother had hardly visited him? Because he was so horrible to look at? Rainflower was upset, Oak Kit told him. Stormkit felt a flood of guilt. I'm sorry, he whispered. What for? But I hurt Rainflower so much. Don't say that. It wasn't your fault. Oak Kit's voice sounded as if it was stuck in his throat. Come on. He sat up and nudged Storm Kit away from the water's edge with his nose. We're supposed to be fattening you up. Storm Kit let his brother guide him toward the fish he'd dropped. He felt weak. Eat, Oak Kit ordered, stopping beside the fish. Storm Kit crouched down and took a mouthful. He could hardly taste it. All he could think about was how strange it felt when his tongue kept trying to slide out of the side of his mouth. How oddly he had to move his jaws to chew. In the medicine den, it had seemed normal. It's just part of your recovery, Brambleberry had told him as he clumsily munched the fish she'd brought him. But he was better now, back among his clanmates. Why was eating still so difficult? He must look weird, trying to keep the food from dribbling from the twisted side of his mouth. He glanced up, wondering who was watching. I can't do it, he whispered. Yes, you can. Oak Kit picked up the fish and carried it to a shadowy spot behind a jutting branch of the fallen tree. Come over here, he beckoned to Storm Kit with his tail. It's quiet. You can eat in peace. Oak Kit pushed the fish toward Storm Kit and padded back to the clearing. Storm Kit's belly rumbled as if to remind him that he was still hungry. Hidden behind the fallen tree, he took another bite of fish. He glanced up to see if anyone was watching, but Oak Kit had found him the most private spot in the camp. No one could see him here. Relieved and grateful, Storm Kit gulped down the fresh kill. Pain raked along his jaw, but he kept chewing. At last, his belly full, he sat up. A small pile of half-chewed fish sat by his paws, where it had dribbled from his mouth. Storm Kit quickly dug a hole in the soft earth and buried it. He jumped, hot with embarrassment, as Oak Kit appeared around the end of the branch. Are you done? Storm Kit nodded. Come and see the training corner we made in the nursery. Storm Kit padded after his brother and squeezed into the nursery. Wow! He stared in delight at the far end of the den. The nests had been pushed back and moss laid on the floor. Oak Kit bounded past him and landed on the moss. This is so we can fall without hurting ourselves. What are those? Storm Kit glanced up at the fat brown bulrush heads sticking out high up the nursery wall. Watch! Oak Kit crouched, his head tipped back as he focused on the bulrushes. Then he leaped. Mid-leap, he reached out both forepaws and grasped a thick brown rush, then fell back, landing deftly on his hind legs before wrestling it to the ground. That's great! Storm Kit felt a surge of excitement. Can I try? Of course, Oak Kit mewed. That's what it's for. Me and Volkit climb up and thread in fresh bulrushes every morning. It's to practice hunting skills. By the time we start training, we'll be able to hit a mouse from three tail lengths away. The den rustled as Volkit, Beetlekit, and Petalkit fought to squeeze in. Hey, I was first, Beetlekit complained as Petalkit climbed over him and scampered across the nests to the training corner. Have you tried it yet, Stormkit? Volkit demanded. He crouched down, wiggled his hindquarters, then flung himself at the wall and snatched a bulrush head. Stormkit pressed his belly to the floor and looked up. A fat bulrush was dangling teasingly over his head. He narrowed his eyes and leaped. Stretching out his paws, he reached for the long fuzzy head. His paws clapped together, grabbing thin air, and he fell back onto the moss, panting. Frog dung! You nearly had it! Petalkit mewed encouragingly. Stormkit lashed his tail. Nearly's not good enough. The nest behind him rustled. Echo Mist squeezed into the nursery, her soft gaze on Stormkit. It's good to have you back. Petalkit purred. He's trying the training corner, she mewed. He can jump pretty high already. Volkit stared thoughtfully at the wall. We're going to have to add more bulrushes. 
The den trembled. You're not going to clog up that corner with more mess, are you? Rainflower pushed her way in and sat down. She licked her paw and ran it over her pale gray face. Can't you play outside like normal kits? Okay. Oak Kit nudged Storm Kit toward the entrance. Come on, he called to the others. Let's play moss ball. Beetle Kit bounded across the den. I'm catcher, he mewed. You were catcher last time, Petal Kit scrambled after him. As his den mates crowded past him, Storm Kit stumbled over a pile of woven reeds at the edge of the den. What's this? It looked like a nest. Had a new queen moved to the nursery? Rainflower paused mid-lick. That's your nest, she meowed. My nest? Wouldn't he be sleeping in her nest with Oak Kit like before? You'll need your own space, Rainflower told him. Your jaw must be sore. You'll probably fidget in your sleep. I don't want Oak Kit disturbed just because you're injured. Storm Kit blinked at his mother. It doesn't hurt now, he mewed. I won't fidget, I promise. Still, it's better if you have your own space, Rainflower returned to her washing. Volkit nudged Storm Kit's shoulder. Come on, let's go and play. Storm Kit stared at his mother. Was she angry because he'd worried her by being so ill? Shellheart poked his head through the entrance. How are you settling in? I've got my own nest, Storm Kit mumbled. Shellheart narrowed his eyes. Have you got your own nest too, Oak Kit? Oak Kit stared at his paws. Rainflower, Shellheart's mew was more like a growl. I'd like to speak with you outside. The fur along Rainflower's spine bristled as she hopped out of the den. Come on, kits, Echo Mist mewed cheerily. How about another go at the training wall? But we're going outside to play. Beetle Kit's mew was drowned by Shellheart's angry snarl beyond the nursery wall. His own nest. He has to grow up eventually, Rainflower answered. But Oak Kit can stay in your nest, Shellheart hissed. Storm Kit must be used to his own nest after so long in the medicine den, Shellheart snorted. At least you're still calling him Storm Kit. And I'll keep calling him that till Hailstar changes his name formally. So you're still determined to rename him Crooked Kit? Storm Kit froze. Crooked Kit. It will suit him. Don't you think it's a bit cruel? If he'd stayed in camp, he'd never have had the accident. She does blame me. Rainflower carried on. Then he wouldn't be the ugly mess he is now. The icy coldness in his mother's voice made Stormkit feel sick. He'd still be my handsome young warrior. He began to tremble. Soft fur brushed beside him. Echo Mist pressed close as Shellheart growled at his mate. How do you think Stormkit must feel? He'll get used to it, Rainflower retorted. To what? Rage sharpened Shellheart's mew. His new name? Being scarred for life? Being rejected by his mother? The accident wasn't my fault. I shouldn't have to deal with it, Rainflower spat. Stormkit's chest tightened. A sob welled in his throat. She's grieving, Echo Mist murmured in his ear. She doesn't realize what she's saying. Shellheart's voice was little more than a whisper. I never knew you could be so heartless, Rainflower, he growled. If you insist on Hailstar going ahead with the renaming ceremony, then we are no longer mates. I will never share a den or a piece of fresh kill with you again. Very well. Storm Kid couldn't listen to any more. He jumped to his paws and rushed out of the den. Please don't argue. I don't mind sleeping by myself for having a new name, he wailed. But Rainflower was already crossing the clearing to Hailstar's den and didn't seem to hear him. Storm Kit stared pleadingly at Shellheart. Don't argue because of me. It's not because of you, Shellheart wrapped his tail around Storm Kit. It's because of her. He stared after Rainflower, anger flaring in his eyes. Brambleberry was trotting toward them. How's the nursery? Her cheerful mew faltered as she caught Shellheart's gaze. She turned to see Rainflower disappear into Hailstar's den. She's really going to do it? Shellheart nodded. Brambleberry closed her eyes for a moment, then blinked them open and stared at Stormkit. The seasons change, Stormkit. 
but River Clan never stops being River Clan. Shellheart will always be brave and loyal, whether there is sun or snow on his belt. And you will always have the heart of a warrior, no matter what your name is. She touched him gently on the head with her muzzle. The trailing moss at the entrance to Hailstar's den quivered, and Hailstar padded out. Rainflowers slid out after him. But all cats old enough to swim gather to hear my words, the river clan leader meowed solemnly. Brambleberry flicked her tail. Perhaps I should change my name, she began to walk toward Hailstar. I could be called Swallow Herb, she purred at her own joke. See? She looked over her shoulder at Stormkit. Because that's what I do. I make cats swallow herbs. Stormkit padded numbly after her. He tried to purr, but his throat was dry. Brambleberry halted and looked down at him. Star Clan is watching over you, she told him. Her blue eyes met his. This is part of a destiny only they understand. But you must believe that they are guiding all of us, and that they care about you just as much as any cat in River Clan. Stormkit blinked as the medicine cat turned and trotted away. He wanted to believe her, but why would Star Clan let something so unfair happen to him? Troutclaw, Birdsong, and Tanglewhisker headed down the slope as Echo Mist herded Volkit, Petalkit, and Beetlekit from the nursery. How can he change someone's name before they're an apprentice? Volkit was protesting. Shh. Echo Mist hurried him on with a nudge of her nose. Hailstar waited with Rainflower beside him while the clan gathered at the edge of the clearing. What's going on? Shimmerpelt whispered. Fallowtail shrugged. No idea. It's too soon for the kids to have their apprentice names. Softpaw lifted her chin. Maybe we're going to get our warrior names, she hissed to Whitepaw. Whitepaw glanced questioningly at his mentor, but Timberfur was whispering something to Otter Splash, his eyes dark. Stormkit's heart quickened. He tried to catch Rainflower's eye, but she stared straight ahead. Stormkit, come here. Hailstar's mew was soft. Stormkit padded, trembling into the clearing. He looked blindly around. The familiar faces seemed strange, menacing all of a sudden. Was this a bad dream? I have gathered the clan to witness the giving of your new name. I'm sorry you have suffered so much. The whole clan knows how brave you've been. His mew was gentle with sympathy. Your new name may describe your face, young Kit, but it doesn't describe your heart. I know you are as true and loyal as any warrior. Bear your name bravely as a Kit and nobly when you become a warrior. Storm Kit nodded. From this day forward, you shall be known as Crooked Kit. Stormkit tried not to hear the murmur of shock that swept around the clan. He stared past Hailstar, confusion clouding his thoughts. But I was born in a storm. I'm Stormkit. How could he ever be Stormstar now? Suddenly he glimpsed an orange and white pelt in the shadow of the sedges. The cat from the river. Her pelt shimmered as though caught in a heat haze. He tasted the air and found only the familiar scents of his clanmates. She must be a Star Clan cat. Star Clan is watching over you. Brambleberry's words rang in his head. Had the orange and white cat been sent to remind him of their promise? Don't worry, little one. He heard her words again. It's not your time yet. You have a great destiny ahead of you. Crooked Kit, he murmured his new name. I am Crooked Kit. He glanced around his clanmates. No one met his gaze. Only the shimmering orange and white cat. Her amber eyes shone, unblinking at him. She believes in me. With a rush of hope, Crooked Kit lifted his chin. I am Crooked Kit, he repeated. Chapter 5 Can I sleep in Crooked Kit's nest tonight? Oak Kit mewed to Rainflower. His eyes glistened in the moonlight that filtered through the walls. 
It's my last night in the nursery. No, Rainflower climbed into her nest and circled, ready for sleep. How many times have I told you? He's used to sleeping alone. You'll stop him from getting a good night's rest, and he needs as much sleep as he can get if he's ever going to grow. Crooked Kit flinched. A long moon of sleeping in his own nest had deepened his pain, not eased it. Volpaw, Petalpaw, and Beetlepaw had received their apprentice names and moved to the apprentice's den, and Echo Mist had returned to the warrior's dens. Crooked Kit curled into his nest and tucked his nose under his paw. If only he hadn't broken his jaw, Rainflower would still love him. Instead, she acted like his ugliness was contagious. He'd tried to please her, to make up for his accident. He'd fetched her prey from the fresh kill pile until she asked him to stop. He'd offered to clean out the stale moss from her nest, but she'd shaken her head. Clean out your own nest, she'd told him. Soft paw can do ours. Crooked Kit shoved his nose tighter under his paw. His belly rumbled. His jaw ached. He'd only managed to eat a fish tail earlier before pain had stopped him from chewing. If he couldn't eat, how would he even grow big enough to get his apprentice name? Crooked Kit! Volpaw was calling. Crooked Kit blinked open his eyes. Hot green leaf sun shone through the reed walls. Rainflower's nest was empty. Had he missed Oak Kit's naming ceremony? The Dawn Patrol brought fresh kill. Crooked Kit struggled groggily out of his nest, his legs trembling as he stumbled out of the nursery. Volpaw was bouncing around Shellheart. Look what he caught! Shellheart held a fat trout in his jaws. He dropped it at Crooked Kit's paws. Crooked Kit jumped back. The fish was almost as big as he was. Shellheart purred. One day you'll be catching fish like that. He tore a lump from the shimmering fresh kill. Eat this, he tossed it beside Crooked Kit. I'll give the rest to the elders. Tanglewhisker won't believe his eyes. Crooked Kit watched his father carry the fish away, then looked down at the piece at his paws. Volpaw was watching him. Crooked Kit ignored the trout, even though its fresh river smell was making his mouth water. He sucked back the spit that was threatening to spill over his twisted jaw. Has Hailstar given Oak Kit his apprentice name yet? He asked. Not yet. Volpaw glanced toward Hailstar's den. A pale gray tail twitched between the trailing moss covering the entrance. Rainflower wanted to talk to Hailstar before the ceremony. Perhaps she's asking Hailstar to make me an apprentice too. Hope flared in Crooked Kit's belly. She told Echo Mist that there's only one warrior good enough to train Oak Kit, Volpaw went on, and she's going to make sure Hailstar chooses him. Oh, disappointment dragged at his pelt. Which warrior is it? Volpaw shrugged. Who knows? He glanced at the piece of trout. Are you going to eat that? Crooked Kit hesitated. He was hungry, but there was no way he was going to eat in front of Volpaw. He still drooled like an elder. You have it, he kicked it toward Volpaw. Thanks, Volpaw crouched and started eating. Crooked Kit's belly growled. Let all cats old enough to swim gather in the clearing. Hailstar was padding from his den, his wide shoulders sleek and freshly groomed. Cedar pelt slid out from the sedges. A dead frog dangled from his jaws. Fallow tail jumped down from the ancient willow. She turned and called up to Softpaw. We'll practice diving later. Softpaw slithered clumsily down the trunk. I don't know why we have to learn to climb. It's not natural. Tanglewhisker poked his head out of the elder's den. A ceremony already? The sun's barely up, he grumbled. But he padded down the slope with bird song and trout claw ambling after him. Pike Tooth hauled himself out of the reed bed, clasping a bundle of stems between his jaws. River water streamed from his tabby pelt as he laid the reeds on the ground. Shimmer Pelt followed him on to dry land, another bundle dripping between her teeth. She dropped the reeds and shook out her glossy black fur. Lake Shine, who was dozing nearby, leaped to her paws as water sprayed her. Sorry, Shimmer Pelt flicked her tail. I didn't see you. Lake Shine's mottled gray pelt made her look like dappled shadow beside the shore. It's okay, 
The she-cat licked her wet fur. It'll cool me down. Brambleberry emerged from the medicine den and sat beside Softpaw. The apprentice was lapping at her chest where mossy willow bark had turned her snowy white fur into another patch of tabby. Whitepaw came hurtling from the dirt place tunnel. Did I miss anything? He circled his mentor. Timberfur sat down. Not yet. Crooked Kit wondered where to sit. Shellheart was beside Hailstar. Rainflower stood apart from her clanmates, Oak Kit at her side. Oak Kit's eyes sparkled. Crooked Kit wanted to race across the clearing and wish him luck, but he knew Rainflower would send him away with a snarl. Brambleberry flicked her tail toward Crooked Kit. Sit with me. She stroked Crooked Kit's spine with her tail as he reached her. It's nice and cool here. As he settled beneath the willow beside her, Echo Mist joined him. I bet you're proud of your brother. Crooked Kit purred. Soon Oak Kit would be the strongest and bravest apprentice in the clan. He's going to be a great warrior like Shellheart. Echo Mist's scent touched his nose and nursery memories rushed back. When a bad dream woke him, she'd let him creep into her nest and bundled him among her own kits. She always gently pushed him out before dawn so he could go back to his own nest before Rainflower woke up. It's best not to cause trouble, she'd whisper, licking his ears. I think Oak Kit's trying to get your attention. Brambleberry nudged Crooked Kit from his thoughts. Oak Kit was staring at him, mouthing something. Crooked Kit tried to guess what he was saying. It looked like Crooked Paw. He's wishing I was getting my apprentice name too. Warmth flooded him. It won't be long, he silently promised. Hailstar dipped his head. Oak Kit, come here. As Oak Kit padded forward, Hailstar called another name. Shellheart. Crooked Kit blinked. Hailstar was making Shellheart Oak Kit's mentor. Fathers never mentored their own kits. He stared at Rainflower. Her eyes glowed. She had planned this. Crooked Kit felt suddenly cold. Hailstar's gaze swept the clan. Shellheart and Oak Kit share courage, strength, and loyalty. He dipped his head to his deputy. Strengthen those talents in your apprentice, Shellheart, and make Oak Paw a warrior who will lead River Clan to greatness. Oak Paw! Rainflower was the first to raise her voice in praise of River Clan's newest apprentice. Oak Paw! Volpaw and Petalpaw joined in. Timberfur and Bright Sky lashed their tails enthusiastically as they called out Oakpaw's new name. Crooked Kit scanned the reeds, looking for a glimpse of orange and white pelt. The Star Clan cat had come before. Would she come now to remind him of his destiny? Or was Oakpaw going to get that too? Join in. Crooked Kit felt Brambleberry's breath in his ear and realized he hadn't called his brother's new name. Oakpaw! Oak paw, he yelled to the wide blue sky. Oh, Star Clan, let him be a great warrior. As the plea flashed in his thoughts, Oak Paw padded toward him. Thank you. Oak Paw bent his head and rubbed his jaw along Crooked Kits. I hope we get to train together soon. You're my littermate, and I'll always be there for you. Crooked Kit purred, his jealousy melting. He loved Oak Paw too much to want anything less than the best for him. He just wished Rainflower loved them equally. Oak Paw's eyes shone as he turned back to Hailstar. I promise I will train hard to become the best warrior I can be. Rainflower crossed the clearing. Well done, my dear, she purred to Oak Paw. Shellheart pushed in front of her and touched Oak Paw's head with the tip of his muzzle. I'll expect you to train harder than any other apprentice, he warned. I don't want anyone saying I'm going easy on you because you're my kit. Neither do I, Oakpaw puffed out his chest. Shellheart glanced at Crooked Kit. There's no reason I can't show you some of the moves I teach Oakpaw, he promised. Excitement fizzed in Crooked Kit's paws. Don't be silly, Rainflower sniffed. He's too small. Crooked Kit stared at her, his twisted jaw gaping. He shut it quickly and swallowed. Was she right? He was eating as much as he could, and he had nearly outgrown his nest in the nursery. Pelts brushed past his nose as Petalpaw and Volpaw crowded around his brother. Well done, Oakpaw! Crooked Kit backed away. 
Yeah. Beetlepaw nosed past his littermates, his shoulders stiff. Well done. Now I understand why I didn't get Shellheart as a mentor. Oh, Beetlepaw. Petalpaw nudged her brother's cheek with her muzzle. Aren't you over that yet? Just because you're Hailstar's kit doesn't mean you get the deputy as your mentor. You know Hailstar matches us with who he thinks will train us best. Beetlepaw snorted. Then why'd he give me Otter Splash? Shh, Fullpaw hissed. Beetlepaw stared blankly at his denmate's frozen faces. What? Otter Splash had crossed the clearing and was standing right behind her apprentice, her white and ginger coat shining in the sunlight. Maybe he thought you needed to learn a bit of respect, she suggested. Beetlepaw spun around, his pelt ruffled. Sorry. Otter Splash looked steadily at him. I think you'd better spend the afternoon cleaning out the elder's den instead of learning battle moves. Beetlepaw's face fell, but he didn't argue. Okay. He patted away, dragging his paws. Petalpaw hurried after him. I'll help. Perhaps you should help too, Shellheart meowed to Oakpaw. My first apprentice duty, great. Crooked Kit watched him charge away, envy pricking. His mother's sharp mew made him jump. Aren't you going to thank me? Rainflower was glaring at Shellheart. Shellheart narrowed his eyes. What for? Who do you think arranged for you to be Oakpaw's mentor? You? Shellheart blinked. Hailstar understood it made sense for the strongest warrior to train the strongest apprentice. Echo Mist's anxious mew sounded in Crooked Kit's ear. Why don't you go and see if Oakpaw needs help? She nudged him toward the slope. Go on. He patted away reluctantly, glancing back at Shellheart and Rainflower as they faced each other, hackles high. If he'd never had his accident, they'd still be happy. Oak Paw, Crooked Kit stuck his head through the neatly woven entrance of the elder's den. Petal Paw looked up from Tangle Whisker's nest. Oak Paw went to gather moss. I'll go and help him, Crooked Kit offered. He's outside the camp, Petal Paw told him. Oh, then can I help you? A bundle of stinking moss hit him on the nose. You'll just get in the way. Beetlepaw was clawing through Troutclaw's nest, his nose wrinkled against the stench. Why don't you go and play? Petalpaw mewed kindly. We can manage here. Tanglewhisker was patting his nest back into shape. He's got to learn sometime, the elder croaked. Well, he can come back and learn by himself. Beetlepaw tossed another ball of moss toward the entrance. This is bad enough without having a kit under paw. Crooked Kit bristled. I'm only a moon younger than you, he snapped. And four moons smaller, Beetlepaw answered back. Growling, Crooked Kit ducked out of the den and stomped down the slope. Perhaps Pike Tooth and Shimmerpelt needed help. He'd gathered reeds two moons ago. There was no reason he couldn't do it now. He hadn't shrunk. Can I help? He called from the edge of the reed bed. The water lapped at his claws, cool and refreshing. Pike Tooth backed out of a thick swath of reeds. Don't fall in, he warned. You could teach me how to swim, then I could help better, Crooked Kit pointed out. Pike Tooth shook his head. You're a bit small for that. So are minnows, Crooked Kit felt like jumping into the clear patch of water and teaching himself how to swim. Shimmerpelt waded out of the river and dropped a mouthful of reeds on the shore. I know you're bored, she meowed sympathetically. There aren't any more kits to play with, she glanced around the camp. Maybe you could practice stalking by yourself? Crooked Kit felt his tail droop. Didn't anyone want him around? Brambleberry was watching him from outside the medicine den. Do you want to help me sort herbs? She called. I'm going to be a warrior, not a medicine cat, Crooked Kit snapped. He turned and padded across the clearing. Oakpaw was trotting into camp, a wad of moss between his jaws. Shellheart hailed him. Oakpaw, when you've delivered that, I'll take you on a tour of the territory. Crooked Kit pricked his ears. Can I come? He called hopefully. Shellheart sighed. One day. He watched as Oakpaw raced up the slope, dropped the moss, and dashed back down. Ready? Oakpaw nodded. 
Crooked Kit sat down and watched them disappear through the entrance tunnel. Rainflower was lying in the shade of the sedge wall, sharing fresh kill with Lakeshine. She lifted her head and stared at Crooked Kit. I'm moving back to the warrior's dens tonight. She turned her fresh kill with her paw. Lakeshine's letting me share her nest until I build my own. You can't. Crooked Kit's heart began to race. That meant he'd be alone in the nursery. His clanmates would all be sharing tongues and snoring together while he lay on his own, like an outcast. Maybe Rainflower would stay if he did something to impress her. Maybe he could get her to love him again. He raced for the fallen tree and scrambled up the trunk. Claws stretched, he skittered along the jutting branch he'd climbed moons ago. Look, Rainflower! He reached the end and stretched up, legs trembling, heart pounding, tall enough that the whole clan could see him, the bravest kit in the clan. Look at me! Rainflower twitched her tail. Get down before you fall, she called wearily and turned back to her meal. And stop showing off. You'll be an apprentice when you're ready, not before. Somewhere in the woods, a warbler shrieked. Crooked Kit sat up in his nest. The clan was asleep. Even through the walls of the nursery, he could hear snores and snuffles and the rustling of nests as his clanmates stretched and rolled over. Crooked Kit felt wide awake. His heart ached in his chest too fiercely to sleep. He trailed around the empty den, breathing in the scents of rainflower and echo mist. Perhaps the orange and white Star Clan warrior would come now. He scanned the shadowy edges of the nursery, straining to see through the half-light. Was this loneliness part of the destiny she'd promised? Star Clan is watching over you, he remembered Brambleberry's words. This is part of a destiny only they understand, but you must believe that they are guiding all of us, and that they care about you just as much as any cat in River Clan. If Star Clan wouldn't come to him, then he'd go to them. He'd visit the Moonstone, where Brambleberry shared tongues with their ancestors. When he was in the medicine den, she'd described her journeys there. He just had to head upstream and get through Wind Clan territory without being spotted. After that, high stones would be easy to find. It was bigger than Sunning Rocks. It makes Sunning Rocks look like a pebble. That's what Brambleberry had told him. Butterflies fluttered in his belly, but he ignored them. He had to know whether this was part of his destiny. Padding to the nursery entrance, he peered out. The clearing was deserted, silvered by moonlight. Crooked Kit slid out of the reed den and padded quietly across the clearing to the entrance tunnel. The sedge whispered around him as he headed out of camp. Chapter Six Gentle rain began to fall as Crooked Kit followed the grassy path away from the camp. The river glittered beside him, I cross the river and head upstream to the moors. Then I... He frowned, trying to remember the rest of Brambleberry's words. His paws pricked nervously. First, cross the river. He couldn't swim yet, which left him just one option. The stepping stones. He felt sick as he remembered his fall, smashing his face against the rock, the pain, the swirling current. Then he remembered the orange and white cat's amber gaze burning through the green water. He had to make it to the Moonstone and talk to her. He had to find out if everything that had happened since the accident, Hailstar changing his name, being left in the nursery on his own, was part of his great destiny. How could it be? Nothing had been great. Everything had been terrible. But if it was part of his destiny, he would bear it. He could bear anything to be truly great. Pushing through the bushes, he slithered down the bank onto the muddy shore. The river was shallow and sluggish, lightly dappled by raindrops. It looked harmless now, lapping at the stones, but Crooked Kit knew its power. It had washed away his clan's home. It had nearly killed him. Ahead, the stepping stones shone, wet with rain. An owl shrieked in the trees beyond sunning rocks. Crooked Kit sniffed the air searching for fresh Thunderclan scent, but smelled only his clanmates. Timberfur had passed this way recently, leading the Dusk Patrol home. Fallowtail must have been with him. The tang of her paw steps was still fresh on the grass. Crooked Kit paused. Very fresh. Was she still here? 
Ducking, he scanned the shore and hoped his pale brown tabby pelt wouldn't show in the dark. But he could not hide his scent, especially now that it was tinged with fear. Ears stretched, he listened, but heard nothing beyond the river's murmuring and the soft patter of rain on leaves. Crooked Kit took a deep breath and made a dash for the stepping stones. Tensing, he leaped and landed, sure pawed, on the first stone. The river flowed dizzyingly around him as he jumped to the next. He was definitely bigger than the last time he'd tried to cross the river. His paws gripped the stones more firmly, and they didn't seem so far apart. He focused his gaze on the far shore and crossed the rest of the stones without hesitating, landing on the other side with a sigh of relief. Sunning rocks rose into the dark, drizzly sky. Clouds hid the moon, and Crooked Kit had to squint to see his paws on the sandy shore beneath him. His hackles lifted as he smelled Thunderclan scent drifting down from the new borderline. Was Hailstar ever going to fight for this land? Flexing his claws, Crooked Kit headed upstream. He followed the shore, slinking into the bushes as he passed the River Clan camp on the other side of the river. The path began to climb steadily. He was deep in ThunderClan territory now. Scent marked every bush, and he closed his mouth so the foul stench didn't touch his tongue. His ears twitched. Beyond the soft gurgling of the river, he heard water thundering. He must be nearing the falls where Brambleberry collected colt's foot. Crooked Kit sniffed, tasting the zest of it in the air and the stone tang of splashing water beyond. The path grew steeper, climbing beside the river, the shore now a rising cliff that grew higher and higher with every paw step. Crooked Kit peered over the edge. Far below him, the river rushed past, swirling in the moonlight through a deep rocky channel. The thundering water grew louder, echoing from the rock, and as Crooked Kit rounded a corner, he saw the falls for the first time. Higher than any tree, throwing droplets up toward the moon, the river plunged straight down where the land fell away, hurtling into the deep gorge. Crooked Kit stiffened, suddenly aware of how narrow the path had grown. Sheer rock rose on one side and plummeted down on the other. He flinched away from the precipice, grazing his pelt on the cliff face, and flattened his ears against the roar of water as he pressed on. The graveled path scratched his paws and wind whipped rain across his muzzle. It smelled peaty and rich with the scent of pollen. As he reached the top of the falls, the roar of water faded. The path flattened, and the river flowed smoothly once more, brimming to the shore. Crooked Kit gazed across the swath of land that stretched out beside him. It rose toward the moors, and beyond that he could see distant cliffs. High stones? He'd heard warriors and elders talk about the jagged rocky peaks, and he knew that was where the moonstone lay. A new scent hit his nose. Thunderclan markers had been replaced by a different stench, a new smell. This must be Wind Clan territory. Then I cross Wind Clans more. Brambleberry's words rushed back to him. His heart quickened as he turned his paws away from the river and headed upslope into the moorland. The soft bushes gave way to prickly heather and gorse. Crooked Kit weaved among their stems, thankful for the cover. Ears pricked and mouth open, alert for wind clam patrols, he padded on. A familiar scent stopped him in his tracks. River clan? He sniffed again, unable to put a cat's name to the scent through the strong smell of heather, but it was definitely river clan. Had Hailstar sent a patrol to find him? That seemed unlikely. He'd been alone in the nursery. Who would even know he was missing yet? He frowned and kept going. At the top of the slope, a small pile of rocks jutted from the heather. Crooked Kit scrambled onto the lowest rock and looked at the stones above him. If he could get higher, he might be able to see high stones. He glanced up at the sky, wishing the clouds would clear. He wanted to see Silverpelt and know that Star Clan was near. Rain spattered his nose. Screwing up his eyes, he reached up the rock, feeling for cracks to curl his claws into. Finding one, he hauled himself up and scrabbled onto the next boulder. He was above the heather now. It stretched out ahead of him, and in the distant darkness he could just make out the jagged shape of high stones. A warm wind tugged his wet pelt. He tasted the air. The river clan scent hit his tongue again, clearer now. He could recognize it now. 
fellow tail. A mew sounded on the breeze. Crooked Kit scrabbled up onto the summit of the outcrop and crouched at the top. Did you hear something? A deep mew sounded below. Clinging to the wet stone with outstretched claws, Crooked Kit crept forward and peered over the edge. Two pelts gleamed in the heather below. Crooked Kit gasped. Grit showered from beneath his claws. Fallowtail's light brown pelt glowed in the half-light. A tabby tom stood with her. Crooked Kit shot backward and pressed his belly against the rock. Is someone up there? Fallowtail's mew sounded frightened. Oh, look, the tom growled. Crooked Kit froze. The stench wafting up alongside Fallowtail's fear scent smelled like the markers he'd passed at the border. Wind Clan. As claws scraped rock, Crooked Kit slithered tail first over the edge of the boulder. He landed clumsily on the ledge below and pressed himself into the shadow. Thankful he was small enough to hide in the shallow crevice where the boulders met. Drawing his tail close, he waited, trembling. I can't see anything, a voice called above him. Let me look. Crooked Kit heard another pelt brush stone. I can smell River Clan. Fallowtail gasped. But no one's here, the tom soothed. There's nowhere for a warrior to hide. I smell River Clan. Fallowtail's breathing quickened. Some cat must have followed me. Let's go. Crooked Kit pressed himself harder into the crack as Fallowtail and the other cat slid down past him. Paws damp with fear, he stared from his hiding place as the warriors slipped into the heather and bounded away across the moor. When his breathing had slowed, he crept out of the crevice and slithered down the rock. He padded around the outcrop, skirting the trail of mixed wind clan and river clan scent, and pressed on toward high stones. His mind whirled as he followed a track through the gorse, ears pricked and pelt bristling. What was Fallowtail doing here? Had Hailstar sent her on a secret mission? But why was she with a wind clan, Tom? Was he helping her? Why would any warrior betray his clan like that? The rain eased and the clouds drifted away until the moon was a claw scratch of silver against a crow-black sky. Crooked Kit crested a short, steep rise that stood like an island in the vast sea of heather. High stones towered in the distance, more sharply etched against the sky, but no closer than they had been before. Crooked Kit gazed in dismay at the wide space between the moorland and the moonstone. It was broken by hedges and stretches of meadow and dark shapes he guessed must be two-leg nests. How would he ever travel that far? His belly growled. If only he knew how to hunt. It couldn't be that hard. Echo Mist was always complaining about kitty pets hunting on the edges of their territory. If a kitty pet could do it, then so could he. And imagine Rainflower's face when he told her he'd traveled to the Moonstone and back. He tasted the air hoping to scent prey, but smelled nothing more than heather and wind clan stink. Sighing, he padded down the rise. At least the edge of the moor was close. He could see where it tipped down toward the meadows beyond. He'd be out of wind clan territory by moon high. Bushes rustled behind him. Crooked Kit whipped around and glimpsed a pair of eyes flashing in the heather. Star clan, help me! Heart lurching, he ran. His claws sprayed Pete as he hurtled through a swath of gorse. The sharp twigs snagged his pelt, but he hardly felt the pain. Paws thrummed the ground behind him. Crooked Kit didn't dare look back as he skidded over the crest at the edge of the moor and raced down the slope toward the meadowland. The paw steps were gaining on him, thumping closer. Crooked Kit charged through a wall of wind clan stench. The border! The markers were so strong it had to be the edge of wind clan territory. Their warriors wouldn't chase him here, surely, but the paws kept coming. Crooked Kit pelted to the bottom of the hill. His chest screamed. Blood roared in his ears. Ahead, a smooth river of stone sliced through the land where it flattened out. A hedge loomed beyond. Perhaps he could find somewhere to hide there. If I make it. The paw steps were a frog length behind now. He could hear snorting and feel the earth tremble. Eyes wide, he glanced back and saw... A rabbit charging after him. A rabbit! Astounded, he stumbled to a halt. The rabbit charged past him, its eyes gleaming with panic. Crooked Kit glanced back up the slope. His breath stopped, 
Four Wind Clan warriors lined the crest of the hill, their eyes shining in the moonlight. Were they watching the rabbit or him? A growl made him turn. Two giant eyes lit the stone path. A monster was storming straight toward him. He'd heard nursery stories about monsters. It was even more terrifying than Echo Mist, eyes wide, pelt bristling, had described. Huge, sharp-edged creatures with hard, shiny pelts and yellow beams shooting from their eyes. Their round, black paws smelled of burning stone, and the air shuddered with noise even before they appeared. But monsters were stupid, clinging to the thunderpath as if they were afraid of venturing onto soft grass or into trees. A cat could outwit them by holding his or her nerve and getting out of the way. Crooked Kit backed away from the thunderpath as the monster screamed by. Wind howled as it passed, and its stench bathed his pelt. Fur on end, heart bursting, Crooked Kit clung to the earth. And then it was gone. Thanks, Star Clan. It didn't see me. Crooked Kit opened his eyes. The rabbit lay in front of him, flat on the hard black stone. Blood pooled around from its mouth, and Crooked Kit shivered. The monster had killed it without even slowing down to take a bite or snap its neck. He looked back up the slope. The warriors had gone. His breath shallow, Crooked Kit padded shakily across the thunder path. He paused beside the rabbit, wondering whether to drag it to the grass at the edge. It was, after all, fresh kill now. But its dead open eyes made him shudder, and he hurried past it and dodged into the safety of the hedge on the far side. Trembling, he crouched down and let his terror slowly ebb away. High Stones was ahead of him, still distant beyond rolling fields. Crooked Kit straightened up and followed the hedgerow. Keeping to the edges of the open meadows, where he couldn't be seen by any passing foxes or badgers, he pushed on, his belly growling and jaw aching. The moon climbed over High Stones and slid down behind them. Crooked Kit paused. The stars were disappearing as the edges of the sky began to turn pale. He wasn't going to make it to High Stones before dawn. He wasn't even close. Ahead, a stone wall marked the edge of another meadow. Crooked Kit squeezed through a hole where the stones had collapsed. A huge nest rose ahead of him, four-sided with strips of black wood covering the walls and a curved roof. Its entrance was blocked by a smooth slab of paler wood, but a tiny hole next to it showed darkness inside, warm and sweet-smelling. It might be a safe place to rest. Crooked Kit tasted the air and inhaled the scent of dry grass. More tired than he'd ever been in his life, he padded up to the small opening. He could just make out piles of dried stalks stacked high in the giant space inside the nest. There was no sign of life, no warrior scent. Paws heavy as stones, Crooked Kit slithered inside and found a dark corner. Too weary to figure out where he was, he curled into a ball, tucked his nose under his paw, and gave in to sleep.